Well, as always, greetings from Pennsylvania. Got Naomi back there. So yeah, we are in Berks County today, here at a place called Monocacy Hill. Um, I filmed here several years ago. There's, there are some ruins you can film in this area, some trails. There's an interesting hill located here as well. We'll talk about that. So normally, if you were looking for a place to film or to look for volcanoes and earthquakes and fault lines, you wouldn't think about coming here to Pennsylvania. You would go to like maybe California or Alaska or some other place that's known for those kinds of fun, interesting, you know, exciting geologic stuff. But interestingly enough, Pennsylvania does have some interesting geology. It's one of those things that no one really talks about. You know, if, if, you, if you've followed me along my channel, you know I love to talk about like hidden history and stuff, the kind of history that no one wants to talk about. Well, the same can be said for geology sometimes, and Pens Pennsylvania is no exception with that. In fact, there are people that come from all over the world. There are people that come from California to study geology at this location here at Monocacy Hill. So consider that. Why would they come to, why, you know, isn't California a lot more interesting? Hmm, well, that's why they come in here. But anyway, we'll, we'll talk about that in this video. So I'm going to go ahead and throw out a nerd alert right away here at the beginning of this video. We're going to be talking, well, I'm going to be talking a lot about some geology and, and, and things like that to explain what's going on here at this site here at Monocacy, at Monocacy Hill. There's a ton of people here today, too. This is Labor Day, so I kind of didn't, I should have thought about that a little bit more, but we'll, we'll make do. There's a ton of cars, but we'll try to find some places off trail, a little bit more quiet to talk, because I am looking for something called xenoliths. I'll put that down here as well. A xenolith. Sounds alien. <laughs> and in a way it is. Alright, but let's uh let's get up to the trailhead. Yes, yeah, so the main parking lot is actually right in there, but you can see there's cars lined up all the way down the road. I had to park. Yeah, he's back that way, so a ton of people out here today. I don't blame them. It is a beautiful day. Yeah, now that's September we had some ugly you know, hot, muggy weather for a while. Now it just turned beautiful, so people are out. Taking advantage of this beautiful weather. And a day off from work for a lot of them. All right, so I am looking for the white trail that will lead us to the top of Monocacy Hill. So the question, so the question is, are we gonna be hiking up a volcano today? Is that what Monocacy Hill is? That is indeed the question. Yeah, here we go. You can take the lower trail or the Monocacy Hill trail. This is where we're going. Are we hiking up a volcano? <laughs> Alright, so I'll go ahead and throw up a map of Monocacy Hill. You'll see you'll be able to see the hill clearly in the middle of the map. Now, a hill out in the middle of a level area does not in and of itself indicate that something is a volcano. Certainly not. But it is one indication. A small one. But there's a lot more uh, evidence of this being like an old volcano. I'm definitely going uphill. So as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, Pennsylvania might be a weird place, like I said, to study volcanoes or volcanics and earthquakes and fault lines and stuff like that, but it's actually not. Actually right in this area, starting in Lebanon County, Schaeferstown area, there's a fault line. It's called the Ramapo Fault Line. It runs all the way through, well, from, from Lebanon County, current curves up into northern New Jersey and up into southern New York along the Hudson River, I think in a town called Haverstack. There's an actual fault line that no one really seems to talk about that much. It's called, like, it's called the Ramapo Fault Line. So there's your fault line. Now, there have been earthquakes associated with it, although it's, it's considered to be a um, failed, it's called a failed rift. So it's not necessarily the most active fault line anymore. We'll talk about, a little bit more about that later. And where we have fault lines, you do have what we call volcanic activity or magmatic activity occurring. Now it's definitely occurred in this area. 
this isn't the only area here in Pennsylvania that is potentially volcanic, um, a volcanic nature to it. I filmed a location in the past up in Jonestown, up in northern Lebanon County, about a volcano there, or volcanics. You gotta be careful when you say volcano, because when you say volcano, everybody thinks like that. There's big cinder cone type of volcanoes. Sorry, I'm going uphill. A lot of breath, but not all volcanoes are like that. Some volcanoes are just a crack in the ground where lava pours out. And that is the case of the one up in Jonestown. No one really talks about that one, but if you type in Jonestown Volcanics, you'll indeed learn about that one. It's the only place in Pennsylvania where you can find uh, lava deposits. Not uh, fresh lava deposits. They're obviously solidified from a long time ago. But they're there, right where the Swatara Creek and the little Swatara Creek meet. I actually have some. I filmed the video where I went there. So yeah, you can find sites of volcanic activity in Pennsylvania. There's also a place called Dinosaur Rock. I filmed there a number of times. It's right on the border of Lebanon and Lancaster County. It's this cool formation. I'll show you a picture of it here right now. So that formation is actually made of solidified magma. It was molten rock that never reached the Earth's surface. Obviously it's on the Earth's surface now because of erosion, but when it first oozed up through the rock layers, you know, it was underneath the surface of the Earth. So, it's, it's a type of rock called diabase, solidified magma. So that's what dinosaur rock is. It's solidified magma that oozed up from the earth. And there are no lack of those areas here in Pennsylvania that have that diabase rock. They're called a, um, igneous intrusions is the name. Igneous refers to a certain type of rock. And intrusions means it's intruding through the other rock layers. Igneous intrusions. You can find a lot of outcroppings of that here in the southeast of Pennsylvania. And that's, an, and that's one reason why you can also find gold here in southeastern Pennsylvania. It's because of that, those igneous intrusions. They bring up minerals from deeper in the earth up to the surface. And up and up we go. There is a view up here from what I remember. And you know, all this rock you're seeing is that diabase rock. Used to be molten magma that solidified below the Earth's surface, but is now exposed due to erosion. And the whole, all of Monocacy Hill is that is a huge mound of this diabase rock. And if you are doubtful of anything I'm saying here, you can obviously do your own research. Like I said, you can type in Jonestown Volcanics to learn about that area. You also type in Monocacy Hill, volcanism, or magmatics, I think is a word you could use. Or just type in Monocacy Hill Volcano. I think that might work too. I forget what all I typed in. A lot of rocks here. But yeah, you can do your own research. We're not done yet. The nerdiness will continue because why would there be a huge bulge of molten magma? Why would it rise right here at this spot? And elsewhere in here, and elsewhere here, and elsewhere here in Southeast PA. Like I said, it has to deal with that fault line, the Ramapo fault line. And something called the Newark Rift Basin, which is part of that fault line. But I need to find a place to sit and talk about that. So I believe just up here is the top. I don't hear anybody, which is due to the number of cars here. That seems surprising. Maybe everybody's on the other trails. There are, there are a number of trails you can hike here. Yeah, this is all die base rock. A lot of times it does have that mounded appearance. I think this is not quite the top yet. Yeah, there's some more chunks of it over there. Okay, I guess we've got a little ways to go this way yet, but we're, we're now on the top. Still, eventually we'll go off trail too, because I want to talk about, I talked about, the, I mentioned those xenoliths. We need to try and find those too. Don't know exactly know where they might be. Because I haven't told you what they are yet, but. Right, so we just came from that way. 
I feel like this is the top here because the trail starts to go down unless there's another outcrop poking out that way. We'll head down there, but I haven't been up here for years. I mean, there's kind of a view out there, but maybe the view is further down. I don't think I ever actually hiked up this way. Last time I was here, I hiked up from that way, which is much steeper. Let's keep going. Yeah, so up ahead here is the overlook. Big giant outcrop of rocks here. Well, not giant, but big enough. Yeah, out there's the countryside of Berks County. Some giant solidified magma right here. They need to do just a little bit of tree trimming. The view was a lot better several years ago. And so to understand more about what's going on here, you need to understand what the Ramapo fault line is. Because when you think of fault lines, you often think of, you know, California, the San Andreas fault line. Of course, major fault lines are, you know, sections of the Earth's, Earth's crust meet. Some are striking against each other and going under or over top. Some sloping against each other. In some instances, you have a fault line where the Earth's crust is splitting apart. And that's what the Ramapo fault line is. It's a place where the Earth's crust started to split apart and then it kind of stopped. Or more like this, it split apart. And it's called, a, it's called the Newark Rift Basin because it, after it split, part of it collapsed. This side collapsed down and created a basin. It was like an open spot here. But that open spot is now filled in with other sediments because of erosion and stuff. So you can't see like a huge basin out here. But there was at one point, was, there was crust split, collapsed, and then it's filled in with stuff. And of course, why would you have a rift fault here, here in the middle of Pennsylvania? Well, we're not too far from the edge of the continent. Of course, that, the edge of the continent actually goes underwater a little bit. You know, here's the water, it actually goes underwater a little bit. And then you have the, the, what's called the continental shelf, which is oftentimes, you know, like I said, exceeds out into the ocean a little bit. And then it drops off into the, you know, the abyss of the ocean. So we are not, you know, we're not too far from the edge of the con continental shelf. So at the edge of those conti continental shelves, if I could talk, you often have these little rift, rift fault lines. Think of it as like if you go to the, down to the seashore and you dig a, a hole in the sand and, and it starts to fill up with water as the tide comes in, you know, the edges of your hole, the sand starts to break away in little clumps and falls down into your hole. You know, you see a clump, you see cracks and it falls. That's kind of what happens here at the edge of the con continental plates. Those little rifts form at the edge and sometimes they collapse into the ocean and sometimes they don't. In this case, it didn't, you know. This is all here, so this part, it's, that's why it's called a failed rift sometimes too. It started to open up, it didn't collapse all the way into the ocean, it just kind of went and then that part collapsed in a little bit, so it's still here. But it's kind of scary to think, what if, what if it became active again for some reason and it started to, this whole section of the coast started to collapse into the ocean. <laughs> Not something you really want to think about, because this is where I live, but yeah, that's kind of what's going on here. So what does all that have to do with there being a potential a volcano here on Monocacy Hill? Well, wherever you... Whenever you have the earth splitting open, even a little bit, and then compression from, you know, like the rift, the stuff collapsing in, you tend to get what's called magmatic activity. Of course, if you remember from science class, magma is molten rock that's below the earth's surface, but as soon as that molten rock reaches the earth's surface, it's called lava. So that's the difference between the two. It's basically the same thing, it's just one's below the surface and one's above the surface. And when they solidify, they do become different types of igneous rock because of you know, they tend, to, they, they tend to solidify slower beneath the Earth's surface than they do above the Earth's surface. So this is, or what's right behind me right here is that dye-based rock, remember again. So it used to be a molten magma. So that's why you would have this dye-based rock here and all these other places I mentioned here in southeastern Pennsylvania. It's a result of the Ramapo fault line and that Newark rift basin. So that's why the magmatic activity is here. Yeah, when the, when the magma stays below the Earth's surface, it's called magmatic activity. And if it breaches the Earth's surface, then, it, then they use the term volcanic activity. But what makes Monocacy Hill unique amongst all some of these other, you know, die base or igneous intrusions as we call them? Well, it's pretty big. It's a huge mound. 
And also it's because of the presence of those things called xenoliths, which we'll get to a little bit later, but xenoliths are usually found um, where there was volcanic activity. But, and what people think, and none of this is absolutely confirmed because obviously a lot of time has gone by since all that wonderful stuff happened with the earth splitting and things like that. But what some people think this is, not just loony people, but actual scientists, that this is actual, that this hill is, is the magma chamber of what was a volcano once. This is all that's left of it. Where's the top of it gone? Well, the top of it is it got eroded away. There's, there was a lot of erosion in this area. So the, so here's Monocacy Hill. This is just, you know, you know that was the magma chamber, but the, what was above it is all gone, eroded away. And this is what's left, is the magma, is the solidified magma chamber, the diabase rock. So that's kind of interesting to think that like you're kind of sitting on what was once the magma chamber of a volcano. Yeah, because there was so much magma here. I mean, this is an impressive amount of dye base material, magma, that this, if this much came out, that perhaps it did reach the Earth's surface and created some sort of volcanic activity, whether it was, you know, a typical cinder cone or just like I said, a split in the Earth where lava poured out. We'll never know because that's all gone. Yeah, let's talk about those xenoliths. A xenolith. A lith means rock, and xeno means alien. You know, Xeno, if you watch sci-fi movies, you, you know, the Xenomorphs, those freaky looking aliens that pop out of people's chests and stuff, if you watch that stuff, but... So Xenolith kind of means alien rock. It refers to where when you find a rock embedded within another rock, um, two different types of rock. In this case, you would have certain types of sedimentary rock embedded within this igneous rock, or the diabase rock. And it's something that only occurs in places like magma chambers where the lava was moving fast. So when you find xenoliths, it generally indicates that there was like a magma chamber there, some other fast flowing lava indicating, you know, magmatic or volcanic activity at the spot. And that's why people from all over the world, places like California, that's why people come here to study this spot because of the xenoliths. It's a very, it's kind of a unique area. So it's kind of interesting. That's why many scientists think that this was at one point a volcano right here. But what's left here of Monocacy Hill now, like I said, is just the uh, solidified magma chamber that has now been exposed and above the Earth's surface due to erosion. So that's kind of interesting to think. Like I said, it's not just some loony people saying or hoping that this would be a volcano. It's actual real scientists, you know, consider this to be a possibility that this is a volcano. There's no definite answer to that. Like, is this a volcano? We'll never know exactly. Unless you have a time machine. That'd be cool too. But it's a... Uh, it's highly probable though, possible. Interesting. All right, let's go Let's go walk around a little bit more. I, don't, I would like to find some of the xenoliths. I'm not sure if we'll find any or not. I do want to give credit to a viewer, I forget your name, but someone did remind me within the past year of this spot. I, like I said, I had filmed here years ago and I think someone messaged me back then about the possibility of this being a volcano. And I was kind of like, eh. <laughs> I think I researched it a little bit. I was like, oh, that's kind of interesting. But then I kind of forgot about it. And I think within the past year, maybe a couple months ago, someone else messaged me about this spot. And I remembered that research I had done. So I kind of looked into it more again. So if you think I'm nuts for everything I said, you, you can think I'm nuts. A lot of people do. But you can, like I said, you can research the stuff yourself. Look it up online. There's actually quite a bit to be said about this spot. But once again, like I said, nothing can be proven absolutely. But it is an interesting interesting location. There's actually a lot of interesting geology here in southeastern Pennsylvania that doesn't get talked about. I do want to do some videos on the Ramapo fault line, see if I can find evidence for it. I mean, it's there, but I want to see if I can find surface evidence. I mean, maybe, maybe even follow the its line as it goes, starts, you know, like I said, in Schaeferstown and goes up towards New York. It'd be kind of a cool series, but from what I've tried to research on already, it's extremely difficult to find, like, information about it and where exactly the fault line is because it's not always too visible from the surface. All right, let's wander around a little bit, see what we can find. See if we can find anything that looks xenolithy out here on these rocks. All right, so let's look around on these rocks a little bit. I am not a xenolith expert. I've never seen any in real life. Uh, they're pretty rare, so that makes sense, but a lot of interesting markings, but these are, I'm pretty sure these are what you call lichens. There's different types of them here. They're like a living organism that actually grows on the rocks. Pretty sure that's what those are of some sort. Over here's an interesting 
rock where you know it changes I mean this definitely changes from one type to another here I don't know if is that a xenolith I don't know for sure but it looks they look like two distinctive types of rock but I'm not an expert but that is interesting yeah so here's another look at that view which could be a little bit better so we stand right next to this magma all right now the question is do I go back the way I came or do I go down this way the steep way maybe I don't know. Maybe we'll go down this way. We'll keep an eye open for things. Maybe there's some more rock outcrops this way. Yeah, some more rocks over here, so let's check it out. See if we can find anything that looks more like xenoliths. Like I mentioned, you know, people do come here from, you know, even like California and elsewhere to to study these rock formations and stuff, looking for these xenoliths. So they are here. They just might not be like right on trail. Oh, here's another view. Oh, this view, maybe this is the view I remember. Check that, oh yeah, this is the better view. Okay. Yeah. This is the view I remember. All right, yeah. Yeah, last time I was here, I didn't go all the way up, up to those rocks. I kind of stayed here. Wow. Yeah, so definitely a good idea to come this way. I would have missed this spot. I kind of, you know, I, I remember the, the view being better here, so that's why I was a little disappointed when I was up there, but yeah, this is what I remember. All right, beautiful up here. Yeah, I'm still up here, I'm just kind of being nerdy and looking at these rocks a little bit more. A lot of times the diabase, you know, these solidified magma rocks, they have that rounded shape. Remember that picture of dinosaur rock? Kind of looks similar. So they all have that kind of shape like they, you know, they, this is, Imagine just being molten magma oozing up through the crust and then it solidifies in these little mounds. Also, what it looks like. As far as xenoliths go, I don't know. Don't see anything here either. The most intriguing thing was that other rock we looked at, that brownish colored one. Yeah, I'm still up here. It's just an absolutely beautiful spot, though. Beautiful day to be up here. All right, I think we are gonna head down this way. We can get back to the parking lot going back this way too. Surprised there's not many other people up here. All right, let's head down. Beautiful place. I do want to make it clear though that I am not claiming to be some kind of expert on this kind of stuff. You know, I'm not some certified geologist. I do teach science. It includes, you know, when you teach physical science and stuff like that, you do teach geology. But like I said, all this stuff that I've told you about, you know, about this area possibly being a volcano, a lot of information I found online. Well, all of it I did, including the stuff about the xenoliths. It was, if you're into that kind of stuff, it's fascinating. So I found it very interesting to read. Because this is almost in my backyard too, so that makes it interesting. So part of me would love for it to be an actual volcano. You know, a volcano in your backyard. That'd be pretty cool. But yeah, like I said, there's still doubts about that. You can't, like I said, you can't prove for sure that, that that's what was here. But it's definitely intriguing. Like I said, you can do your own research. If this, if this prick piques your interest, you can research it yourself. All right, let's keep going. Keep exploring. Okay, so I think that'll be it for now. I am off the mountain now, or the volcano, or the uh, magma chamber, whatever you want to call it. Like I so said, there probably are some pretty awesome examples of xenoliths up there somewhere. I'm sure there's more rock outcroppings off trail. I just don't know where those are. And this time of year where everything's still overgrown, it'd be difficult to find them unless you knew exactly where they were. 
But I, I love this kind of stuff. You know, like I said, or in, in the beginning of the video, I love that kind of that hidden history that no one talks about. But I also love stuff like this, like this hidden geology that no one really talks about either, but it's out here. It's fascinating stuff, at least to me it is. And as, as I said earlier, if you want to learn more about it, you can do your own research. As always, thanks for coming along, and uh, I'll see you around.